our guest speakers for the evening, Lauren Millar and Zachary Maxwell of Empower Texas. So I will turn it over to y'all. Folks, how to engage their government. 
So uh, with that, uh, I will turn it back over to Lauren and she's going to give you a little bit more information. Awesome. So I feel like probably most of y'all were here about a year and a half ago when I spoke. And when I spoke here before, I really discovered what Empower Texans does. But in case anyone doesn't know what we do, I'm going to run through it really fast just to give you some foundation of, um, for when we talk about our other programs. And stuff. So who we are. Um, it, sometimes it gets a little confusing how we're divvied up as far as nonprofit PAC, but we actually have, we're made up of a 501c4, a 501c3, and a PAC. Um, and so our political action committee, you know, that's what can endorse candidates, give money to candidates. Uh, our 501c3 is our education foundation, so supports our writing. Um, and an investigative journalism, really, and then our 501c4 is kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, but yeah, that's just to clear anything up, because I know it's a little confusing sometimes. But we were founded in 2006. Um, it really started with uh, Michael Prince Sullivan driving around Texas. He went through two Ford Fusions in one year, uh, driving around, speaking at Tea Party meetings, um, activist groups, and really just um, sharing the vision of this organization, trying to tell people how they can get engaged in their local government. And you know, there's so many people around the state who have so much passion for, for government and policy and really appreciate the impact it has on their everyday lives, but people have a hard time figuring out how to, in a practical way, channel that and really make a difference. So uh, Michael started off driving around Texas, um, you know, talking to people about that stuff, and, and then here we are over 10 years later, with a staff of a little over 20, I believe. Um, of 20 somethings. 20, yeah. <laughs> a staff of over 20, with 20 something year olds, uh, but writing about local and state government. And you know, you have people like Zach doing the same thing that Michael did, driving around Texas and, and helping people get engaged. So, um, so really, that's that's the meaning behind our name is we're wanting to empower Texans. We know people are busy and it's hard to keep up with the thousands of pieces of legislation that come through the legislature every two years. It's hard to know what your effective tax rate is in your county and how that's going to realistically affect your tax bill. So we try and connect people to real policy in an easy and simple way. So you can stay engaged and hold your government accountable because otherwise it's very daunting and people just don't have time for that. Uh, so we started off just in Austin covering statewide stuff. Uh, and then we, a couple years later after our founding, started a local bureau initiative. And, and that was really um, to cover school districts, counties, city councils. Um, and, and as I'm sure you all know, that's really the easiest way to get plugged into activism and, and make an impact on government is at the local level. So we started off with, an op with a Dallas office and then Houston, uh, me out in Midland, Odessa, we have a Rio Grande Valley representative, and then we also have someone covering Austin and San Antonio. And so, oh. so that's kind of who we are. How we do that has actually really grown over the past few years. Um, some of y'all may know about the Texas Scorecard. That's our main way of informing people, is just writing articles and, and doing investigative journalism. You know, we're also kind of known as a watchdog group on behalf of the taxpayers, so we write a lot about tax issues. Um, we dive into like, uh, you know, Second Amendment rights issues. You know, our scope has really grown over over the years. Um, uh, school bonds, you name it. Uh, we also most recently have the Scorecard Radio. So if you don't want to read all the articles, you can hear about them via radio. Um, and Tony McDonald, our general counsel, is actually uh, the main voice of that, and he does a great job. He's a good, good radio voice. He does, and he has some great interviews, by the way, and you yes. can get all of those on iTunes. They're on uh, the podcast, so you should go down there and download them. Yeah, he interviews um, state reps, you know, activists, he interviews local bureau <coughs> staff, we have uh, stuff going on. You know, I did a short clip about the San Angelo School Bond and how you know, two votes really decided on how that went. So just things like that. Uh, we have our, our fiscal responsibility index, which we'll dive into a little bit later, but that really gives people a perspective um, on how their senator and representative is voting when they go to Austin. 
just to see, you know, are they doing what they said they were going to do on the campaign trail. Uh, we have the Torch Bears program, which is also relatively new. Um, Zach is heading up that. It's a really cool program that serves as like a support group for grassroots activists, and um, I'll let him dive into that later. We have public speaking engagements like this. So anytime you'll want a speaker, just call us up. Um, you know, we, we speak around the state, depending on. You know, if it's in Austin, we'll have our Central Texas person go and speak. If it's in, um, well, maybe not the radio. Somewhere in the Rio Grande Valley, that's not really dangerous. <laughs> we'll go and speak there. Um, and, then, and then with our PAC, we support good candidates. Um, you know, when people contribute to the PAC, we, we have a group that interviews different candidates, and we see where they stand, and if they're going to represent taxpayers well, and then we'll support them. So I, I kind of already touched on why we do what we do, kind of a saying that gets said a lot more around the office versus externally, but uh, we don't want to seat at the table, we want to get rid of the table. And you always hear of the swamp and the establishment and how they have such a stronghold not only at the national level but in Austin and even in our local towns. Um, and so that has, they've really rolled the roost for so long until what I believe is kind of the internet boom, where more information is getting out to people, people are getting more informed, and the facts are on our side. If people, you know, when they realize how much their local governments are spending, or the type of um, conflicts of interest that go on within government, they'll that'll be reflected at the voting booth. And uh, I don't know if I need to go into why we should be locally engaged. That's kind of preaching. Uh, so here's a little clip of our uh, Texas scorecard. You can go on there and uh, you can scroll down and even divvy up uh, the articles that you read based on the area of the state that you're in. So you can scroll down and click West Texas and see some West Texas articles. Uh, here's our fiscal responsibility index. So what we do during each legislative session is as bills are filed, we evaluate, is this something that's in uh, Empowered Texan scope? And what we'll do is if we decide to, to rate a certain bill, we will send an email out to uh, the legislature, let them know that this is going to be on the fiscal index. And then at the end of the legislative session, um, we tally up you know, what, who filed what bill, if they supported it, certain motions, amendments. Um, some of the bills that you'll see on there is, for example, the local property tax cap really isn't the right word, but the trigger where um, if a local entity tries to raise your property taxes past a certain point, it triggers an election where the people get to um, vote on whether that passes or not. So really it's, it's giving more power to the people. It doesn't mean that local entities can't increase their taxes. Um, it's just if they do pass a certain point, they have to go to the voters. Well, what you saw during the legislative session is the whole local control mantra that, you know, this bill is trying to take away local control. And that was really just a buzzword because it really meant you're taking control away from the voters. Um, so you'll see that a lot this next legislative session. But anyways, we, we rate bills like that, ethics bills, um, abortion bills, things like that. And it's, it's important to understand about the Fiscal Responsibility Index is what she said is she's, we send out notifications to all the state reps and all the state senators to let them know that these bills are going to be on the Fiscal Responsibility <coughs> Index. So they're going to be rated. So pay very close attention to what bills you know, that, are, that are going to be rated. And they earn these scores. We do not give these scores to these state reps and these state senators. They earn them. So it's very important to understand that very clear difference. It is not a fine line. It is a very bold, clear difference that they earn those scores. We do not give them out. And so, uh, and you can go on to the this word, you can go to empowertexas.com forward slash index, and you can see how your state representative did. And speaking of that, I've got a book here 
that is uh, Churchill's trial, uh, Winston Churchill and the Salvation of Free Government by Larry Arm. And it is a signed copy for the first person that can tell me what your state representative Drew Dowry scored this last legislative session. 46. Nope. 47, I think. Who said it? Wait. 47. No, nope, it's, it's it, lower. But I already have one of those. Okay, well, it's somebody else. It's um, lower. 35. Close, but a little higher. 36. A little higher. 37. No. Nope. 39. 40. It is a 40. It is a, it is a 40. Oh, I did something. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the house average is actually pretty low, which um, I think is, as most probably would agree, is a reflection of who was Speaker of the House, so that could very well change this next legislative session. We'll be talking a little bit about that here in the future. Yes. So here's a little picture of uh, what you'll see on the fiscal index, the breakdown of the bills. What we've implemented this past year are some videos kind of briefly explaining within 60 seconds the gist of what the bill is. And disclaimer, we are not trained actors. If you have any questions about but those bills, it, so. yeah, and if you have any questions about those bills, like she said, we've got explainer videos on YouTube and also just call us. We'll we'll be glad to. I was I worked the legislative session and so I got these emails and I saw them and I told my boss, said, Hey boss, this is gonna be on the fiscal responsibility index. What do you think about it? He'll be like, Great. You know, he would look at it, and it's oh yeah, that's a great bill, he's gonna vote that way anyway. And then we do it. Some reps don't necessarily have that luxury, but because uh, I guess they are a little bit more liberal than my former boss. But I, I, I digress. Um, but yeah, th this is your state representative, Drew Darby. He got a 40. Um, and then also shout out to Transparency Texas uh, that has been added to the bottom of our website, and that shows how much cash they have on hand, how many contributions they've received over the last year, and their total expenditures. And so. Uh, I encourage you to go on to Transparency Texas and look at all the numbers because you can actually see, uh, you know, their top numbers and who's been giving. I'm uh, willing to bet. I actually haven't looked, but I'm willing to bet you will see a lot of lobbyists on uh, his report. So, um, which tells you a lot about that person. So, uh, to earlier. Yes. Uh, which I think it's awesome that y'all are filing FOIA requests and looking into the effective tax rate. Um, not a lot of people do that because it's. Um, so they can make you wait quite a while, so it's a little frustrating. I've been through that. But um, the cool thing about Transparency Texas is it kind of does that work for you when you're interested in campaign contributions. Because if you try and go to the Texas Ethics Commission, I mean, it's it's very daunting. There's this, all this paperwork you have to go through. So this digests it for you. It's in a simple form. There's your state rep. Or senator, sorry. So a lot better than your state rep. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I'll let Zach take it. Yeah, so, so um, y'all wanted to know a little bit about the chairman's race. I was there. I'm actually in your Senate district uh, out of Eastland County. I was a delegate. Um, I met a couple of you there, not all of you. Um, but it's not really a whole lot to, uh, to report other than that, you know, the conservative grassroots folks won at the state convention. We've got a very good platform. Uh, the chairman James Dickey uh, is a great guy. He listens to the grassroots. He brings everybody. He, I think, he embodies the mantra of we don't want to seat at the table. We want to get rid of the table. But you know, citizen run. It's all about the citizens. It's not about what uh, the folks down in Austin want. And so uh, that's very important. And you know, and Cindy Ash, I think that she is actually pretty conservative, and she's a nice lady. She just got caught up with the wrong people, and that's what happens whenever you go to Austin is that oftentimes these guys, they will go down there and they've got the best intentions. They are good people, some not so much, but some are really good people, but they get down there, they get told things that, that aren't necessarily so, they get bad staff. It's my opinion that the number one reason why good members go bad is bad staff. And that what that's what happened to Cindy Ash. I know, you know, I've got friends that work for Cindy Ash and I just don't, agree with them politically on everything, but I know the ways that they are and the leanings that they have, and it's just establishment. And so she got into those guys, and they, you know, 
you know, they weighed the shiny objects and she took it and she said, I guess if this is the way that I've got to win, this is the way that I've got to win. And so uh, that's pretty much the crux of it. Uh, and so happy to answer any questions about that later. Um, but uh, as far as the platform, we had a, uh, we had a great uh, victory on the platform. I know they were wanting to extend that a couple, and I know Bob Hall's coming here to talk about the electric grid. That was one of the things that they wanted to extend. That school choice and spending limits uh, were, were three that they wanted to add to the priorities. But the top, constitutional carry, we've been trying to pass that for, conservatives have been trying to pass that for a long time. Um, I actually don't know where we're at uh, as far as actually getting that. You'd think with as much overwhelming support as we have in the state, with other states having constitutional carry, you'd think that Texas, as you know, conservative as we are, would be able to get that. But thanks to leadership and the coalition with the Democrats, uh, we have not gotten that. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, tax-funded lobbying, and I'm going to save that one for last for a reason. Um, and then pro-life legislation, um, ending abortion, uh, is uh, actually, as somebody that is young, uh, pro-life is my number one issue, and uh, I think that my generation is going to end abortion. Um, I don't know when it will be, I don't know how we're going to do it, but I think that our generation is much more pro-life than generations in past, and I think this is a true testament to that, that it is on the priorities that we want to end abortion, the murder of you know, innocent children, you know, it's, it's, it's very bad. Uh, as you all know, property taxes, property tax reform, um, ending uh, Robin Hood, and doing away with the property tax, property taxes as a whole. TPPF has a uh, has a white paper out and a plan on how we can actually do that in ten years. We can do that with a consumption tax that actually is not as uh, strenuous as you would think. There's a way that you can balance it by t cutting out some of the exemptions and stuff like that. Um, that you should definitely go to TPPF and check that out. Um, but there's a way to do it, and it is on the, the priorities, and I think a lot of in this room share that, that goal. Um, religious liberty and privacy. I think it's hilarious uh, that some of these people, some of the left, you know, leading Republicans and the Democrats, they attack the Privacy Act in Texas, and they talk about how uh, that's somehow infringing on rights, and, and, and it's, it is, the bills that I saw in this legislative session was only for government entities, only for schools. Say, hey, you can't, like, you're not going to allow this child that is a male to be in female locker rooms and showers, and you're not going to, in all these public facilities, that's just wrong, and that's not what we want to enforce, and it's a very slippery slope, and you should not allow to do that. So uh, that, that is a common sense piece of legislation that I'm not sure why it doesn't get as much traction um, I asked your state representative how he feels about that. Um, but tax funded lobbying, um, that is a very big deal. Um, bigger than I think anybody really realizes because every, every entity, like you, any, any uh, you know, the county clerks, the, uh, the prison workers, the, uh, the Texas Association of Counties, Texas Association of, or the, Texas Municipal League, Texas Association of School Boards, Texas Association of School Administrators. It's all tax funded. Your tax dollars go to fund those entities, and they hire lobbyists. And those lobbyists are not conservative. And they go to lobby for things that are other than, you know, fighting for, they, they always do it under the auspices of fighting for the local taxpayer, and doing, you know, we, we, we want to protect the local control. But what they really mean by that is protecting local government. They don't care about the citizens. They don't care about all that. What they care about is protecting their wallets. So it's very important that you understand that, that is a very big problem in Texas. And your government entities, which you're paying for, are going down to lobby your state representative and telling you Otherwise, and also, I'd like to make a really quick note about, he had mentioned about unfunded mandates. Let me explain to you what Texas Association of Counties and Texas Municipal League considers an unfunded mandate. Sanctuary cities ban, open carry, all of those things, they think that is an unfunded mandate. Every penal code, Every, every law that we have on the books, that's an unfunded, if they do not assign a dollar amount 
to that, that is an unfunded mandate. To me, that's mind-boggling. But they just claim, oh, we've got all these unfunded mandates, and that's the reason why we can't balance our budget, because the state isn't paying its fair share. So local entities, when you question it, when you ask, well, what is it? Well, what, what, give me five things. Five. That's all I want. One, one thing. Give me one thing that is causing you not to balance your budget because the state is not paying their fair share. And they can't do it. But in, in addition to that, and it ties right in with the tax funded lobbying, is they will go down and uh, they'll say, hey, we really want this matching grant for police officers to have bulletproof vests. And we, we just want it matching. You pay half and we'll pay, that. we'll pay the other half. And you want, you want our police officers to be protected, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, it's great. Okay, that sounds awesome. Pass that, that legislative session. They come back the next session. This is an unfunded mandate. You're only paying for half. How dare you? You want to you want to protect our police officers, right? You you like you don't support police. You're not paying your fair share. That's an unfunded mandate. And so that is the that is the game and that is the trick that these people are playing on you, the citizen. And so we are trying to shine a light on that as well. Yeah, and that bill that I mentioned earlier that would trigger an election if they try and raise your property taxes over a certain amount, that was defeated because of Texas Municipal League, Texas Association of Counties. They have a lot of influence in Austin, um, very established lobbyists. They also opposed a bill, I think by Connie Burton, that um, would require local governments to disclose during an open meeting how much they're spending on tax-funded lobbying. Just and they disclose. Defeated that as well. Just disclose. So those are just two examples, of, but there's quite a few. And Matt Shaheen, uh, also a Freedom Caucus member, had that bill in the House. So this, uh, so your state, I don't know if you recognize this form, but this is the pledge that uh, to elect the speaker candidate that is nominated in the Republican Caucus, in the Republican House Caucus. Your state representative has not signed it. And he has claimed that he doesn't want to sign it. He's also, there's plenty of chatter and talk about him announcing to run for speaker. And the reason why he does not want to sign that pledge is because he wants that coalition of Democrats and liberal Republicans that we currently have in the Texas House. Because there is a handful of bad Republicans that want to work hand in hand with what the Democrats want. And they want to run the House exactly like it is run right now under Joe Strauss. And that is what they want. Now, I've heard every excuse in the book. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I haven't been given a good excuse other than, well, you know, I don't sign pledges. Well, this is a pretty easy pledge. You're a Republican, right? You don't want the Democrats picking the Speaker, right? Because the psychology or the, the, the thought behind it is the worst person elected in caucus is better than the best person elected with a coalition of Democrats. So you want to stand, everybody's for unity, right? Those are the, those people that have not signed that pledge are the first person to stand up and say, you know, oh, unity, and send in all the hashtag unity tweets and all that stuff, talking about how us Republicans need to work together and we need to do the right thing and all us crazies out there that follow the Republican Party platform uh, are just, we're too far right, and we don't know what we're talking about, we're just crazy. You know, those guys, are the, it, it, it makes no sense. It's, it, is, it is not uniform with their messaging, and I don't understand other than the fact that they are lying, and they want to work together with the Democrats. I can't come up with another reason why. Our Democratic Party supporting yeah, she just said that, if you didn't hear that, the Democrat Party here in Tom Green County supported Drew, so. He's making donations to Brian. And, and he gets donations from them and he goes, and so there there you go, folks. It is, it is. We can't eradicate him, he'll run against him. Yeah, um, anybody run against him? The, and I always say that you are the sum of the people that you surround yourself with and so that is uh, that is directly indicative of his record down in Austin, his 40. I mean, that's who he hangs around with. Um, he's got folks in his office that are uh, not very good. They're uh, Democrats, you know. So it is. 
That, that, that's, that's, that you have it. I mean, it's very, it's very transparent. I encourage all of you to reach out and ask, and to get, you know, straight from the horse's mouth, why haven't you signed this pledge? How many others are not signed as I believe there's 20. Yeah, roughly, uh, roughly there's about 20, which is on, which is on par with the numbers of the coalition of Republicans that were with the Democrats. So it's very obvious uh, to see that very clear line. If you haven't signed this pledge, then you're amongst those that want to work with the Democrats for the coalition. Can we go to that website and ask Darby why he did not sign this? So on the state GOP website, you can find this, and then you can also find the list of state reps who have signed the pledge. So it'll tell you. Um, and it's yes no. TexasGOP.org. Yep. Yeah. That's it up there. Yep. TexasGOP.org. Yep. And then that, the rest of that URL, forward slash speaker uh, hyphen candidate hyphen form. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't remember if that takes you to just this or the list, but yeah. generally but that's. You, it's very obvious where it is on the Texas GOP website. Uh, but I, I encourage you to hear it right from this horse's mouth. Ask why he hasn't done it. I'd be. I'd be interested in to see what you know, kind of mixed bag he sends back to all of you guys. So about a week and a half ago, um, one of the guys in our Austin office wrote an article, you know, kind of calling out the Republican representatives who hadn't signed the form yet, and really just took the list from the GOP website and said, these are the people who haven't signed, you know, brings in a question, would they, would they form another coalition like they did with Strauss? Radio personality in the Midland Odessa area saw Kerry's article and realized that the Odessa representative, Brooks Landgraf, had not signed it yet. So he kept contacting his office, asking them. He wouldn't get any replies. Um, and finally, I think it was a few days later, he, he heard back from Brooks Landgraf. He agreed to go on the radio show. Well, the radio show was the next day, and he went on there and said, oh, that Empower article, that's fake news. I've signed it. I've signed it. And I was thinking, what in the world? So I go on there, and within that time span of him being questioned about it, he signed it and submitted the form. So it shows you, it shows you that when you question them about it, they know they're going to get backlash. And I mean, what is he going to say on, on live radio? Why, why wouldn't you sign it? It seems kind of common sense to they me. Can't, but they can't defend it. And we right. turn the lights on the cockroach right, is high. So yeah. um, that's all you have to do is shine a little bit of, a little bit of light on that. And most most people, they, they kind of, uh, what's the next slide? Is it the, yes, OK, which is a great segue into what I'm about to talk about with the Texas Torchbearers Program. So uh, in working in the legislature, uh, one of the most amazing things that I saw is that your state representatives and senators are actually really responsive to uh, to even the most subtle, you know, uh, you know, you get you get five letters in the mail or five phone calls about one issue. That rep is going to pay attention to it. Y'all might have a little bit of a different story because this is a special uh, person, but I know that Charles no. Perry, because I work with his office, he is very responsive to that stuff. Uh, worked very very closely with him. He's a very great guy. He actually cares about. Uh, the citizens. Um, uh, so most state reps, uh, they actually care, and uh, it is it is very easy to get a coalition of folks together on one issue and just say, "Hey, we're paying attention, and we're watching you, and we want you to vote this way." We, we did that. We did that with a property rally, right? Property tax yes. rally, and Perry was already on board with it, right? And Darby, and the reason we did it was because Darby had said on Facebook that this was not, because I tried to vote for uh, property tax was my number one issue, and it wouldn't let me. It wouldn't let me even write it in. And so that's why we did a rally, and we went to his office, and he still was, a, it's, not a, it's not a big issue in my area. Yeah, that's, that's, that's actually very funny. Um, so <laughs> um, so uh, it is, it is very, it's very easy. Now, a lot of those big hot topic items, for example, like the top five priorities for the Republican Party, those lines are already going to be drawn. Those, those lines are very clear. You know where your state rep and state senator is going to stand. Everybody is pretty obvious on where they're at on that. But what's also a lot more effective is at the local governments, where you go and you, I don't know how active y'all are with the city council. 
county commissioners court, and any other municipal utility districts or anything like that that y'all got. But it is, you walk in to a city council meeting and immediately it goes silent. I mean, I see that all across, all across the state. And they are looking around and they're saying, whispering to each other and texting each other like, who is that and why are they here? Uh, we're going to have to move that agenda item we're talking about because we don't want people in it. And so uh, it, it's very obvious. And so uh, with the Texas Torch Bears program, uh, we have designed this program specifically to uh, help those get involved in that. We will do trainings on the best practices on how to engage your government. And we will do best, you know, we'll do trainings on several different things. We have Torch Bear calls where we will get on and we'll bring guests in to talk about programs that they're doing all across the state. And we will, uh, it, is, it is meant to, uh, number one, it is meant to make politics a little bit more fun. Uh, because right now it is pretty dreary and it is kind of hard to stay engaged. Sometimes it's often boring if there isn't some hot topic that everybody's fighting for. And so we actually um, uh, made a little bit of a game out of it. So we have rewards tiers and you can earn lumens, which is a play on words for torch bearer, you know, how bright is your uh, torch shining. And so by going to city council meetings, you can earn lumens. By speaking at them, you can earn more lumens by uh, going and walk walking for your preferred candidate. It doesn't even have to be one that we endorse. Uh, going and uh, phone banking, or writing letters to the editor, all of those things will earn you points. And then you can earn things like a specialized appeal pen, t-shirts, hats, and even a pair of Texas Torch Bearer <laughs> cowboys. <laughs> yes, so uh, matter of fact, we have two folks that have already earned this, and we will do special promotions uh, that we'll do all the time. We, on the 4th of July, we actually gave away a custom engraved uh, Glock 17 handgun. And so uh, we gave that to Steve Waltons out of Colleyville, great guy, huge activist. Uh, he is actually relatively new to the activism scene and has done a great job. And this program is for folks that are just now getting involved and those that have been involved for decades. And so everybody is welcome. We've got, it's a mixed bag of folks and everybody's helping everything and it is meant to build this grassroots coalition, bring everybody in all across the state. We'll put you in this private Facebook group that has uh, that is specifically for torchbearers and only torchbearers, uh, where it is a very active group. Lynette is on there; she's a torchbearer. I don't know if you actually you yeah, know, I got mine today. Great, yeah, and we'll send you a fire kit where uh, it is uh, it has all kinds of really cool stuff in there, like a tote bag and our activist report that says what did and did not happen uh, this last legislative session. Um, that. Uh, it's kind of like a, it is a tool to use. It's got you know common phrases uh, to to you know definitions of things that you need to know, and uh, it shows you how to look up bills, how to speak to a legislator, and all that other kind of stuff. And it's 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 really <coughs> awesome, um, as well as our Torchbearer Handbook that explains a lot of that stuff uh, as well in a little bit more detail how the program works. And so um, uh, it's it's really cool. I hope all of you sign up. It, it is a uh, uh, you go to texastorchbearers.com. This URL, this is an outdated uh, and no problem. Um, it is a new program, like we said, so we just launched the website not too long ago. It's still in beta mode. Uh, it's so new. So uh, texastorchbearers, with an S, dot com. Apply. It's very short, and it's a lot of fun, and I will respond pretty quickly if I'm not traveling all over the state. Uh, and I will accept you, send you a fire kit, and you'll be on your way to earning all kinds of cool stuff and connecting with activists all over the state. Another way we share um, activists and try and kind of connect people is our citizen profiles. I don't know if y'all seen those at all. We try. So, well, the scorecard comes out once a month um, when we're not in legislative session and then once a week when we are. And every edition of the scorecard, we like to highlight an activist somewhere in Texas. So someone who's gone above and beyond to engage politically. So um, I had the honor of writing the last one and it was about um, a young man named Thomas Warren. And he actually founded a newspaper in Amarillo with his father called the Amarillo Pioneer, who's only 17 years old and uh, started it in 2016 because they were tired of the nonsense that was going on in Amarillo politics. There was only really one um, newspaper in Amarillo at the time and they were very entrenched with a lot of 
Um, the business groups there are pretty biased in what they reported, which you see in a lot of towns when there's just one newspaper. Um, so they started their own. They're not for profit, um, and they write a ton of good stuff. He was, I think I said 17 when um, they started it about three years ago, and they started off with about 30 readers, very small online publication. Now they dwarf the main local newspaper in Amarillo. They have more readers than the for profit newspaper, which is awesome. Um, and so just a young man who they, you know, kind of breaking stereotypes, you would think, um, and did this awesome thing with his dad. So, you know, we wrote a story on him and kind of shared why he got involved, how he did, to just try and encourage people, because it can feel very lonely when you're involved in politics. Um, it can be very negative sometimes, and so connecting people, that helps you build support, info sharing, things like that. Um, so just kind of closing up, a little cheesy slide on <laughs> how you can empower Texans. Um, you know, just attending local government meetings, really what the Torchbearers program tries to um, encourage people to do is just stay plugged in, um, you know, ask about what's the effective tax rate. You know, when people are asking questions, it will change behavior more than likely. Um, run for a local office. You know, people always think, you know, I, I don't have a resume to do that. That's not more and more people are running and that's breaking the mold. It's not your stereotypical politician running anymore. Um, I mean, you have Jonathan Stickland who won state representative and he doesn't have a college degree and he'll tell you outright, he's like, you know, I was just a, an activist without a filter and I didn't have a college degree. And, and, but he was in tune with the grassroots and what people wanted and, and he's a great elected official now. He didn't even graduate high school, actually. Oh yeah. yeah. But he's an amazing representative, and um, you know, we've had some very young people run and, and win. I think on Midland City Council, um, there was a 27-year-old that won a few years ago. But just you know, it's people get these ideas of their in their head of what a politician looks like, and it's really becoming not that way anymore. Um, people are thinking outside the box. So. And before we get on to questions. Uh, when you run for office at the local government, which I encourage everybody to explore. It's something that is in a republic if we can keep it. Uh, so everybody should be exploring that, those options, if you don't have a good representative at any level. Um, but when you run, and if you win, you will probably go to a whatever governing body it is, Texas Municipal League, Texas Association of Counties, you will go to one of their trainings well, they were then indoctrinate you on how they think your government should be run. And so that is, how, that is often how you know, most local elected officials don't have ill intentions. They want to do the right thing. School board members, they want to do the right thing. They care about our children. Most of the grand majority of them do not have ill intentions. They are good, solid people that want to do the right thing. The associations in Austin are telling them how to do their job, and they are telling them exactly how to do it. Here is a guide to, ch to check the boxes. This is how you do it. Here, we have attorneys here that if you have any questions at all, come ask us, and we'll tell you exactly what to do. And so they rely because they're just citizens that are busy, just like everybody else. They've got jobs, they've got families, and so they don't have the time, and it is easier to rely on the Texas Municipal League or the Texas Association of Counties or school boards, etc., to do all that. We've got the resources there. They seem like really nice people and very knowledgeable on the issues, and they don't seem like they're always talking about the kids and they're always talking about the taxpayer. So it makes sense to me. Why shouldn't we? So be very mindful of that as well. So, because all of that's out there. But with that, question. What happened, at the, what happened at the convention? Uh, so uh, I briefly <laughs> talked about. I briefly talked about that. Is there anything specific that you would like to know about? Your opinion, what you saw, what? I thought it went great. What happened? What should have happened? Uh, I, I thought. I, I thought. I. I would have liked to have seen that those priorities extended, but at the same time, it's not really that big of a deal because those are great priorities. Uh, but it, it, all in all, we got a great, great platform. We got uh, great people elected to uh, those committees. We got, uh, for the most part, 
Um, James Dickey. Uh, we got James Dickey, who is by far the most grassroots oriented uh, chairman I think we have ever had. I'll, I'll say this uh, on the side is, you know, I never really donated the party because they were always just kind of, well, we'll just keep with the status quo. We're not really going to push our. Uh, so Tom Beckler, during the legislative session before he resigned mysteriously, was, uh, you know, he didn't push the legislative priorities. We, matter of fact, my former boss, Mike Lang, filed several bills that were in the party platform, and we asked him if he would come testify, or he would send somebody to come testify for these bills, and we could never get a hold, and we could never, James Dickey got elected, or uh, got appointed, and all of a sudden, oh, how can we help? That's, that, those are Republican planks. How can we help you help us, help the citizen? How can we do it? And so I think that he is, he embodies everything that uh, grassroots citizens want. And so I think that it was a great, uh, great convention. I it was very successful. I only, that was my third one. Um, I haven't been involved in it too long, but that was the best one I've been to. So I, I consider it a huge victory. Our county didn't vote yeah, it I flipped though. Right. It flipped. Yeah, the Senate district did, not our county. Oh, well, yeah. 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 The Senate district did. Our, <laughs> I will probably say that Eastland County voted 100%, but um, we're very small. We only had like eight or 11. Or <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a couple of comments. Number one, our representative. <laughs> where did the badge of honor? Where are you uh, I called up and. Asked them, you know, to consider this, and Public they container. said, "Will you quit getting your information from Empower Texas <laughs> and ignore that, that those people?" And I said, "I'm intelligent enough to do my own research." Good <laughs> for you. <laughs> uh, the second thing is, somehow or another, I got added to a group called "This Is Your Texas." Have you heard of that? Yet? I have not. I'm not sure if it's from Tri Texas Tribune or what, but you are also one of your least favorite groups <laughs> out there, one of theirs, <laughs> and they do not like Strickland and, oh, and Freedom. Stay on there. So it's rather <laughs> discouraging to read them, but it's Kind of like my husband getting stuff from Mulan. Mulan door. Oh, yeah. Somehow I ended up on Mulan door. Yeah. They don't yeah. take me off the moon. But, but I don't yeah. want to get off of it because then I can keep in touch with what they're doing. Yeah. 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 Well, I will, I, will say, I will say this. Um, it is, I wear it with a badge of honor, and I know many people, you know, on our staff do. Um, because, you know what? If, you know, if you're not catching flack, you're not doing your job. As citizens and as people that are fighting, uh, for righteousness and fighting for the right thing, uh, you know, you can look at it, look at it biblically. Even, you know, if you're if you're not catching flack. If you're catching flack, you are over the target. And so, if you're not if you're not getting uh, bombs thrown at you in my book, you're not doing your job right. Uh, because uh, I've i found that the easiest way to get a bomb thrown at you is to go poker, poking around and simply asking questions. Um, also, uh, I, the number one question I get whenever I go out uh, by our opponents is, you know, well, y'all are a special interest group. Y'all, y'all, y'all are bought and paid for by these big oil and, oil and gas billionaires and all this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you know, I got interviewed in, on the radio in Brownwood, and they kind of fired that one off the uh, off the off the bow and, and said, well, you're a special interest group. How do you how, you care to comment? And it's like, yeah. We are a special interest group. It's just that those people out there don't tell you what our special interest is. It's not a bad thing. It's the taxpayer. It is limited government. It is property tax reform. Do you disagree with that? Silence. Every time. Because they can't argue with it. Because what they say is that we're bought and paid for. And that we do all of these bad things. What are we doing bad? Give me one example. You can't do it. Because I can't prove a negative. I can't prove what we are not doing. So I can't. You, you, can't, you can't prove a negative. So the burden of proof is in, on, in your part. So you have to tell me what we are doing wrong. Because in my book, we're not doing anything wrong. We're 
we're doing, we're helping, we're, we're literally empowering citizens to do what they want to do. We are teaching citizens how to engage their government. We're not telling them how to do anything. It's a beautiful thing because we just share values. We're conservative. We want limited government. That's it. That's all it is. And so and we've got, and the beautiful thing also is that we've got thousands of donors all across the state of Texas. Thousands. I signed, I ended, all of our staff individually signs hundreds of birthday cards every week. It is a task. And though it, it, it is, it is a task. And it, it sometimes, uh, we all enjoy doing it, but sometimes it can get a little overwhelming in some of the bigger months for birthdays. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, and so I can personally attest, we've got thousands of donors but, and all these people that want us to, that, that go, oh, it's all this, oh, they're a dark money group. They're evil. They're bad. Well, look. I don't understand. You already know that Tim Dunn gives us money. You already know that the Wilkes family gives us money. You already know that Dick Salisbury, and you could name a couple other big donors. Why do you want us to disclose our donors? Why? It's because they want to target the little guy. Look at our history and how it has been affected by that. We don't have to do that for a reason. Because they are protected. And we don't want to do that because there are people that want to, to politically attack those people for contributing to an organization that they care about. And that's across the board. If it's a liberal organization, you know, there's some person that works with this, for this really conservative company. You know, they don't, probably don't particularly care to, to share that they donate to this really liberal group. It's vice versa. It's on the same side. It's free speech. You know, and it's protected. And so uh, that's, it's, it's mind-boggling. You have to look at the fruits of our labor. We produce uh, an index. It's all public record. Go look at it. We're, we're not hiding anything. There's literally nothing that we're hiding. Ask any of us any question ever. Every single person on our staff will say the same thing. So you prove it. The burden of proof is in their form. Uh, we're very transparent. Any other questions? You might mention what percentage did you run by. Uh, do you know? Because I actually don't. It's, it's two thirds to one third percent. Yeah, two thirds yeah. by yeah, it was two thirds vote by to one third Cindy Ash, which is a really big deal. And the the flip that happened, like I said, this Senate district yeah. voted for Cindy Ash, and the entire Senate district flipped. Yes. And Here San Antonio. In San Antonio. Yeah, those the were the two. Yeah. That flipped. Yes, and which you know, and it's it's the games they play. The left, the leftists in the Republican Party will never understand that they don't like the games. Citizens don't like the games. All we want is for, to be honest, open, and transparent. They don't like the games that are being played. When, whenever she went up there, and she uh, that that lady, whoever that was, a finance officer, you just thought that it was that was the time that you chose to resign. Everybody knew. Everybody knew that that was a, that they were trying to sway voters into voting for city action. It was a last ditch effort. Everybody knew it was very transparent. It wasn't a secret. Uh, I think they were they thought that it was, but it wasn't because citizens are smarter than that. And it was like really you chose now. That's not very fair. Let's let's get back to the issues. So uh, yeah, huge victory. Any other questions? <laughs> Any other questions? Any other burning desires that anybody just, is just dying to ask me? Because I know they're out there. Well, since I'm an old lady, it's wonderful to see you young people. It thrills my heart and gives me courage that it's not all fault. Absolutely. And I see, I see it all the time, and I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I, I'm 28. I don't look that old, but um, I, get, I, get, I get carded all the time for literally everything. <laughs> Uh, a couple of years ago, I got parted buying Sharpies. So, uh, Whoa. Yeah. so uh, I'll love that when I'm 40, but not so much right. But I see it all the time. You know, you're, you're getting you're getting young people that are getting involved in the conservative movement. And there's a huge movement of uh, youth that are that are staying up, even you know beyond millennials, that are getting in, involved and getting engaged, starting you know conservative groups in high school. Even and so and also you know kind of what I mentioned before in our Texans, I think we have like five people that are over the age of thirty in our organization. We're all just a bunch of twenty-somethings that have gone out and that are passionate about what we believe in, 
uh, my job is very autonomous. I go out and I reach out to folks and I help folks and I don't have, I literally, uh, Michael will every once in a while say, hey, what are you doing? And I'll tell him. I, I'm very autonomous, it's very autonomous. We just have the passion to go out and do things like this and we've got the ability and, to do it. And, and we go out and we do it. And it is, it, it, we have a good laugh every once in a while just to sit back and think about all the stuff and all of the pots we have stirred and how frustrated you know, some of these elected officials will get at a bunch of 20-somethings just telling the truth. So it's a, it's, it's a lot of fun. Do you have a good beer in the college? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. But if you're interested in that, I'd love to talk to you about it. Yeah, there's actually a group called the Young Conservatives of Texas. Uh, I was actually on the state board for the Young Conservatives of Texas uh, a couple of years ago, and I was the I was the uh, part or I was the uh, chapter chairman at Baylor. Um, and that is a great organization, Texas-based. Uh, Steve Munisiri was the founder. He was a former Republican Party chair, and Rand Paul was actually uh, back whenever he was a little less libertarian, more conservative. Uh, he actually founded that chapter. And so we've actually had some really cool interactions there, but it's really cool. There seems to be a whole generation of young people who have gone to college and gotten indoctrinated into the leftist camp. Is there any possibility that they'll wake up one day and realize that it's all been a, a scam? Probably when, once they start paying taxes. That's <laughs> <what I understand. laughs> Yeah, well, once they get a job, or, or if they, unless they're like some professors that just continually go to college to just right. to. They've never done a day's work in their life. Yeah, it, once they start paying taxes, I assure you they will come and around. They're living at home till they're 40. Yeah, and they'll live at home till they're 40. Uh, but so, a note on that if there's any, I went, like I said, I went to Baylor and uh, I saw all the time. I had a really good friend of mine actually, she was in YCT. She circulated petition for campus carry, very conservative. She was one of us. She got it. But then she started getting involved with some of the Christian groups there. She started getting involved that were led by professors. And she is now a radical leftist. I'm talking a radical leftist. Some of the things that she says on Twitter and stuff like that and posts on Facebook, I've been blocked by all, all of her social medias. Uh, because I've questioned her, like, what happened? Like, how do you go from being, you know, incredibly conservative to incredibly liberal? And what it is, especially in these, some of these Christian colleges, is that, you know, when you go to a, a state school or, you know, liberal arts college, you know that it's going to be left-leaning. So conservatives usually have their guards up to say, I'm going to just take this with a grain of salt. When you go to a Christian school, you have your guard up, or you have your guard down. Like, you, you think that you're going to a good Christian school, and so they're actually more susceptible uh, to all the indoctrination of the leftists because there is no exemption for leftists at Christian schools, I can assure you personally. Yeah, so I can personally attest to that. If anybody wants to know more about that later, I'm happy to elaborate. Uh, any other burning questions? Anything at all? A comment that on the other side of it, there's some awesome people going from the other yes, side yes, too, because they're seeing, wait a minute, there these people are not really for what I thought they were for. So well, I'm actually one of those people. Back in high school, so I was I was basically raised by my grandmother, and uh, she was a teacher, and she uh, was uh, was a Republican there for a little while, but then you know in her later years got very liberal, started watching MSNBC. That's all I watched. That's all I saw. That's all I knew. I had no idea. Went to college. That's all it took. Got out of my own, got a job, and I started thinking, wait a minute, this doesn't make a whole, this isn't lining up with, this isn't driving. So uh, it, it, it happens. Yeah, so I'm one of those people that didn't understand that, and that, that moved over, and now I'm, just, I'm one of those, you know, vast right-wing conspiracy theorists. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, any other questions or anything? For me or Lauren, or Lauren. Thank you all so much for having us. Um, here's our contact information. If y'all ever think of a story that you think we should be covering, or you know want us to speak at 
this meeting, any other meetings, college meeting here in town, uh, please reach out and we'd be happy to help.